Imagine having a huge solar array like this at your house, but you're losing 70% of the energy you produce. What is the solution? Install one of these. This is the biggest domestic battery storage system we've ever installed. In this video, I'm going to show you how a beautiful big house like this can go almost completely off grid. Grab a cup of tea, make sure you like and subscribe, and let's get into it. <laughs> it's like they, they probably weigh about... Maybe I'll do three. Yeah, um, how much do they weigh? Well, I couldn't move the trolley then. They weigh a lot. <laughs> uh, once it's up, it'll be right. Yeah. A minute. There you go. Okay. Should we set them up here or...? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. Oh. Max was waiting for me to flip over then. Have a little look. Danger, high voltage. Oh, wow, they are heavy. Oh. It's, like, it's like 1,500 quid each, so. Do you know what I've got today? You're gonna to be well impressed. My, my missus maybe anti-pasty. I've got part of that. You know, like salami. Oh, like cheese board? Yeah. <laughs> You've got a cheese I've board? I've got cheese Why are you calling it a posh name? That's no, so what it's called, anti-pasty. I mean, you know we're gonna go down the petrol station and get a cheese and teen. Cheese, cheese and teas, cheese and beans. Cheese and tea. Pasty, whatever it is. I've been well disappointed by Greg's lately. I know. Every one I've had is cold. Cold. How can they not afford some heat lamps? How do we know our customers are exporting so much power to the grid? Well, it all starts with data. We installed this Zappi EV charger about a year ago, and for one year it's been gathering data about the customer's generation, export, and import, and this is what we found. As you can see in yellow here, every month our customer is exporting megawatt hours of electricity. For example, last month they exported 1.7 megawatt hours of energy to the grid. That's enough to boil a kettle 23,287 times. That's a lot of cups of tea. So now that we have the data, we're here installing a battery system to harness that excess energy and enable our customer to use the excess solar to run his house overnight when the sun isn't shining. Let me show you how we install a battery storage system step by step. So the system today consists of 23 kilowatt hours of battery storage, which is made up of six modules of 3.84 kilowatt hours each and a BMS, which is like the brain that controls the whole thing. And then there's a 10 kilowatt inverter that converts the DC to AC. So this is our inverter. What an inverter does is it takes DC power from the battery in this case and transforms it into AC that's usable in your house. So this is a 10 kilowatt three phase inverter because we have a three phase system here at this particular property. It's a massive farmhouse out in the countryside. They've got plenty of power being generated. They're also using a lot of power in the house. For example, they've got a ground source heat pump. So we get the inverter mounted up first and then these should just stack. See on that picture, you've got a bit of space above, obviously. That's the BMS, the battery management system, which oh, is this so thing here. So this videos. has got the main breaker in. We get that one on the wall first, then we know that it's going to work. And then the rest, we should just be able to boom, boom, boom. Right, so me and Luke have just got all this fireboard onto the wall, um, covered the area where we're going to be putting the inverter and all the batteries. He's just whipped the cover off this socket just so we can see the cables are going up the wall there. So we want to avoid screwing anything in that area or going all the way up. So we've just moved slightly to one side. We're going to mark out these brackets for the batteries, get them screwed through. And because the batteries are heavy, we're going to drill a hole straight through and then these nice fixed screws will screw straight into the brick and get a nice solid fix in. Let's get these drilled and up and then we'll go from there. So we're worried that the wall might be only one course of bricks thick and we just don't want to drill through the wall and pop through the tiles in the toilet. So we're just going to do some measuring. 40 centimetres. I think I reckon it's one. one. From the inside of the window frame. So that takes us to here. So then 
to there, 71. The wall is about that thick, so that should be fine. Yeah, I think it's two quarters thick. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you can, if you look, yeah, yeah look, it, it, it leaves 10 mil. Oh, so then the other one will be 10 mil. Oh, I mean, it's pretty solid, actually. It just, yeah. yeah. It's just a bit of bouncing in yeah. the bracket, isn't it? Yeah. <gasps> Don't give wow. them to them. They'll all be gone. That is pure luxury. <laughs> look at that. Right, shout out to our amazing customers who, who get us little treats like this. That is nice irresistible. So the first step is to mark everything out. Installing a battery storage system in general requires quite a lot of space. Batteries are not small things, especially a size system that we're installing here today. We basically need this whole wall to have plenty of space to position everything neatly, fix it all up securely and have enough space and access for maintenance and heat dissipation. So we're measuring everything out, marking it so that we can do a really nice neat install. Get these batteries we on the wall. Yeah, so I'd say outside. 300 probably, just to be safe. And then I'm just gonna have to pay attention to. Oh, where was the? Where did the bottom want to go, Luke? At least 300. So I'd say a tiny bit higher. One of the next steps we need to do is install the power supply to the inverter for the battery storage system. And we're gonna be running that from this distribution board here. This is one that we installed ourselves about a year ago when we fitted the electric vehicle charging point. And the installers for the heat pump have used this as well to run in their circuit. We're gonna put an additional 32 amp circuit breaker in here, which is gonna feed our inverter. And then from here, we're gonna run an armored cable up through the loft for the power, we're also gonna run an armored data cable, CAT5E, for the CT connections. CT means current transformer, and that's basically like a little clip that clamps around the cables that supply the house to measure the amount of energy that's being imported and exported. And the battery needs to know that data so that it can ramp the battery up to charge when there's excess solar or discharge when there isn't enough solar so that the house is running off the battery, not off the grid. This bit, so you gotta get it to the right level. All oh, right, Luke, are you up there, mate? Nah, is that a mouse trap? <laughs> ah, you right? Ah, oh, I can see light. Got a finger in a mouse trap. Right? Got my finger in a mouse trap. As I put the board over. Twenty-five mil hole in there. Yeah. Gland that in. This data cable, uh -huh. we can just clip it neatly down here. Yeah. Take it through and behind. What we're going to have to do is put like a twenty mil coupler and bush yeah. to space that off slightly there. Mm -hmm. Gland that into here. Gland the data cable into the side here, mm -hmm. and then we're going to run a five core two point five from here off that breaker as well, just to power the meter. Yeah. yeah, it's the only way really with this because there's no spare breakers otherwise if we had spare ways we'd probably put a six amp mm -hmm. in just for this but we don't have any spare three phase ways the cts um, for the battery system mm -hmm. will clamp on there and they will run back to this as well mm -hmm. so we might need to run a little bit of flexi conduit or something down with the ct cables just to have them nice and neat there's something particularly special about this sponsored segment. Let me know in the comments what it is. But today's video is sponsored by Tradeify. Tradeify is a job management platform that we use every day to run our jobs. It helps us stay organized to book and schedule all our jobs, to send quotes to clients directly and they can accept them in the Tradeify app. We can send our invoices, we can do our purchase orders. 
the whole kind of business can be managed through Tradeify. So if you're a tradesperson and you want to save some time, then head to the link in the description where you can get 50% off Tradeify for your first three months using our special code. Do that. Do you want to get the batteries on the wall? Yeah, they sit sure. flush with okay. the top. Perfect. They're kind of hanging it's off. It's like slightly. hanging in. Like so you say, it's be nice on. if it's all... Exactly. I thought that they would really sit on top of each other, but they actually have quite a large gap between them, don't they? Yeah. I guess they've done it on purpose to allow ease of getting them on and off. Yeah. Well, okay, well, let's just try another one. Because it's front on, you don't really see. Yeah. But you could always get some little blocks made up, like a little wedge. Yeah. Do you want to pick up the light one? <laughs> nice. So we're all about neatness at Artisan and this is slightly annoying us how that they, they sort of hang off slightly at the top. We want to just kind of get them lined up, but it's like with the weight, the bottom kind of tends to go in and the top tends to hang out. So we're trying to figure out how to just get them kind of lined up neatly. I think we're probably going to have to put a little bit of a spacer behind them just to get them all sitting flush because otherwise you've got the top of one sits forward from the bottom of the other so just going to try and figure out a solution to that it's kind of strange that you know that they're built like that really i've just temporarily hung the batteries on this side um, and the inverter i'm going to mount the ac isolator and then i can basically get the armor dropped through where i need plan that into there and then we'll take the flex out from here into the inverter. We might have to take the batteries back off to wire them because it looks like you can only access them from the left hand side. So we might have to do these three first and then hang these batteries. So yeah, we'll show you as we do that. So this is a backup consumer unit that we're installing so that the customer can run a couple of emergency sockets in the event of a power cut. So basically we're putting two circuits in on a 20 amp circuit breaker each. Each of these double sockets will be on its own circuit. And then what they can do is run some extension leads out to various important appliances so that if they do, in the rare event that they do have a power cut, they've got the option to actually run off the battery. And the battery in this case won't just switch over and run the whole house. Uh, unfortunately, the Tesla Powerwall is the only one that really does that at the moment and they have massive two year lead time. But this is a good alternative option because let's face it, in the UK we don't really have that many power cuts anyway. Just to give the customer a bit of backup in the event that they do have a power cut for a few hours, they can plug in the fridge freezers and anything else that's important that they need to run and then they have that convenience that they do always have some power available to them. Next up, I'm going to put another IP box here. We're going to bring the, the data cable into it and then put some CT clamps around the towers to measure that. So yeah, I've just got to cut up it because the, um, the box sits right flush against the wall. We need to raise it off the wall slightly just so we can terminate here and put a coupler in. Otherwise it's right against the back of the board. So I'm just going to cut a bit of MDF sheet or something like that. Put that there and then mount the board on top. So I've got the armoured from the board through the loft, comes down into our AC isolator, that's all second fixed, and then it comes out and feeds the inverter. And then now I'm just gonna make off the same cable and that's gonna come out, that's gonna be the AC backup, and that's gonna go to the fuse board that Jordan's doing. So yeah, that sort of side of things is done. Gonna get this fed over to the board for Jordan and then hopefully we can take these batteries off and start wiring them from that side because you have to do this one first because all the connections are on the left. So once them ones are done, then these ones can start to be hung back up. <coughs> um, put this somewhere safe. No, no gym tonight. Okay, so just reading the instructions. Got the little 
plugs here. Uh, there are some longer ones and we're just going to go from, follow the diagram, go from plus to minus, plus to minus, all the way around, just linking our batteries up. Let's get them plugged in. That's the BMS, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, which is, yeah, which is here. So, so we need a the bottom plus. one here, but I just don't know if it's going to reach, which seems crazy. Oh, it'll have, it'll have to go under. Yeah, but it's still going to be tight. I guess it's just... Yeah, I think that's going to be really tight. And then we want one from this minus yeah. to that plus at the bottom. So what I'm doing here is connecting the RS485 cable, which is basically a communications cable that goes back to the meter that we've installed next to the main distribution board. We've used the Cat5 data cable, um, and we only actually need two wires for this RS485. So I'm just using the blue pair and I'm just going to join that in this junction box here just for neatness sake and it also means that we've got spare cores in this junction box that we can later, later use for other things like extra CTs maybe if we needed them or a hardwired data connection or anything like that so that's going to go in there then that's all connected up and then we've just got to program our Wi-Fi thing we could start testing and livening it all up Sharing. You gotta kind of go under. Gotta get your hand under. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like that, click. Click. So Luke asked me a question which Ruben asked as well the other day about testing three phase. How do you do your R1 and R2? Like which phase do you use? How does it work? Basic idea, let me know how you guys do it in the comments. So basic idea is you just pick a phase because it doesn't really matter. You're just testing the continuity of the CPC. So you're just using one of the phases as a path to the end and then the CPC back to make sure that you do have continuity of CPC or earth continuity as we usually call it. So there's a good question and um, something that you know learners and apprentices have to figure out uh, along the way. So I think this is where well, it's the positive it's male or female slightly confusing on these because that I would say looks like the male but some people say that's the female one that just sort of goes in there but it feels quite loose that's the weird thing I think it just tightens when you actually tighten the connector up when you push that on it kind of clamps this down a bit the other one it seemed to fit in a lot snugger this one is a bit but basically on here you've got this little this little bit that clamps down basically that bit is up and then it you clamp it down and it's got these little teeth that just click over there. Those two are also firmly in place. Those are firmly in place. Okay. So let's follow the commissioning process. Mess DCI say press our power button. So there's a breaker on here basically that does the DC side. Turn on BMS DC isolator and press on power button. Select the grid standard code on inverter. Oh, status no grid, device waiting. So we're gonna just check that this meter is all working as it should. The first thing we're checking is the voltages. So we can see our voltages between line and neutral. Um, slightly lower voltage on L1, that's probably because it's more heavily loaded than L2 and L3. Then our line voltages, so this is line one L1 to L2, L2 to L3, L3 to L1. So all, all our voltages are within the required norms. And they, these are our currents which are being read by our CTs. So we've got about four amps on each phase roughly, which looks about right. And then the neutral current is half an amp, so that looks about right as well. Now what we've got to do is make sure that this is communicating correctly with the inverter so that the battery system starts to charge when there's excess solar and discharge when there's not enough solar. So the end of a long day but the battery system is powered up and throughout this day they've been generating about 15 kilowatts of energy from their solar system. Now we can harness that energy and use it to run the house overnight. So it's going to be really interesting to see in the coming days and weeks how that data changes on those graphs that we've shown you. Maybe we'll come back and do an update. If you'd like to see that, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay in touch with our future videos. But either way, thank you for watching and have a great day.
I'm not made for this. Stuck on my fat butt. <laughs>